Hi, I'm Joel, and today we're going to take a look at gain staging within the LV1 system. A lot of this applies to basically any digital console, so even if you don't have the Waves LV1 uh, stick around, you might find uh, a lot of this useful. Let's go. So, first of all, what is gain and gain staging? Uh, well, a microphone converts air pressure into an electrical signal, but that signal is quite low, so we need a preamp to optimize the volume uh, for the, the mixing environment, in this case the LV1 system. And all of this is kind of a moving target. Uh, me talking in, into a microphone, I would need to amplify the signal quite a lot, uh, while if you have a microphone on a snare drum, uh, with a ADHD drummer, the signal into the microphone is ve very loud, so in that case you don't need to amplify as much uh, to reach the optimal target for, for the, the mixing console. So most, if not all, of the digital mixing consoles uh, measure the signal in uh, dBFS, uh, that's uh, decibel full scale. I will just use the, the term dB, uh, but when I say dB, I mean uh, decibel full scale. Uh, and within the system, the kind of ceiling is zero dBFS, zero dB. And since mixing live music is far from a controlled environment, you are advised not to have the signal go right up to the zero dB ceiling, uh, but, to, but to keep some, some, uh, some headroom. So I would advise uh, having the signal hover around minus 18 to minus 12, maybe mi minus 10 dB in order to, to have the headroom. So if, if the singer really uh, leans in into the, to the, the microphone or perhaps, I don't know, the guitarist might, might turn uh, the guitar amp up, you have some headroom so you don't clip the, the signal. So here I have a signal generator outputting minus 10 dB. Uh, I send this channel one to a physical output and have a uh, XLR cable from that physical output going into preamp number three. So if I unmute this, uh, you can see that uh, both of these channels uh, take the signal from uh, microphone preamp number three, uh, and the signal is identical. If I turn the signal down coming from the computer, uh, the signal will be turned down uh, everywhere. So, as I said, it's kind of good practice to have the average signal uh, somewhere around uh, minus 18 to minus 12, maybe up to minus 10 dB. And in order to, to uh, reach that, that target, we have the preamp section. So, for every microphone, we will use the preamp gain to, to uh, optimize the signal for, for the system. Within the LV1 system, when you hit uh, minus 10, the meter is still green. As soon as you are above minus 10, it will turn yellow. Yellow is fine, uh, it, it won't sound bad, but the yellow is kind of an indicator that you might want to turn it down, or uh, at least you don't have as much headroom anymore. And if we turn it up even more, you will see that eventually there will be a red warning light. And in this case, you can see that the, the signal is still below zero. It's uh, minus 0 0.3 dB, uh, but the, the red light is turning on. And that's because in the setup, I've chosen to have the clip threshold at minus one. This you can set to whatever value you want. Uh, it's just an in indicator for when the red light will will uh, turn on. So if we set this to minus five, we can trim the signal and as soon as we pass minus five, uh, the red lights will go on. I typically have this at minus one because then I don't have to see red lights all night. So now that we have a good signal, let's talk volume because gain is not volume. Gain is used for optimizing the signal going into the console. Then we use volume to send that signal to different places. So with faders, you would ideally have the fader sit around 0 dB, because here you have the best resolution for the fader. 
you have to move the fader quite a bit in order to make just a few dBs of change. While if you have the fader down here, even a small move of the fader will change the volume several dBs. So say that this fader too is the house music. Ideally you would like to have the, the fader up here, but then the volume is too loud. Then you could use this trim knob uh, in order to trim down the volume to have, have it perfectly in, in the house, uh, while still have the fader hovering around 0 dB. However, turning down the trim knob will turn down the signal before hitting any plugins. So if we go into, let's say, channel 3 here. So right now the signal uh, is at minus 10, uh, which is uh, quite ideal for, for basically any, any plugins. If I go to the compression, it will start start compress uh, kind of as soon as I, I touch this button. If I were to trim down the signal, the compression th threshold, for instance, would be have to turn down qu quite a lot in order to to make any any compression. And now I have small room for for uh, adjustments. So I would not recommend using the trim uh, to turn down the volume. Uh, rather leave it at zero, then the plugin will work uh, in the most optimized way. Uh, if the, the sound source still is too loud, uh, there are other ways to turn it down, and I will show you later. But first, I will show you another section of the preamp. So quite often I duplicate channels, so I have one set of channels going through the PA, and uh, another set, set of channels with the same inputs going up to the stage, either through wedges or uh, in-airs. So right here I have two channels with the same input, so let's call this one uh, front of house and this one monitor. So let's send some of this to the monitor and let's say that the artist is happy with the, the volume right there. Now if I adjust the gain, uh, I will change the level going to the monitors, which is not ideal. I will have a quite angry artist if I do something like that. So what I can do is, on the monitor channel, I will switch from preamp to local. Now if I change the gain on the front of house channel, you will see that the level going to the monitors uh, will stay the same, uh, because gain on the monitor channel will compensate for the gain changes I do on the front of house channel. So I can do changes to the preamp without affecting the volume going to the artist uh, in ears. And this is also handy if you have uh, a dedicated monitor engineer up on stage and another console to run front of house, then typically the, the monitor engineer will have all the channels set to, to this preamp uh, setting, so the monitor engineer controls the actual preamp and the front of house engineer will have all channels set to local. So both the front of house engineer and the monitor engineer can uh, optimize their signals without uh, interfering with each other. So that's gain staging and now let's have a look at how I work with gain structure uh, within a mix. So uh, let's hit play uh, on this uh, uh, virtual uh, recording. So as you can see, I paid attention to gain staging while uh, doing this show. All of the channels uh, are hitting uh, yeah, around minus 10, minus 12, uh, sometimes going, going uh, a bit higher, but never approaching 0 dB. So what I typically do is uh, let's start with some uh, uh, kick and snare, and I will pay attention to how much signal I send into the drum group. Uh, so I will uh, try to hit around minus 10 or so in order to have the, the plugins within the drum group work in, in the most uh, optimized way. So with some kick and snare I see around minus 10. I will then turn the drum group up so that I will hit the left right master uh, again around minus 10. Uh, right now we just have kick and snare so uh, we should be a bit uh, below minus 10 because there will be more stuff added. And right now I can turn up the master uh, so that I will hit the sweet spot in the venue, the actual sound that we hear. 
so now, right now we just have kick and snare, so we need some hi-hats, some overheads, uh, let's turn in some bass, and then we have the guitar that will be sent to this music group, so I will uh, place this around zero and then turn the, the music group up to where the guitar sound nice with the drums, and then add in some, some keyboards that also are sending to the music group. Then we have some vocals, place this around 0 dB and then turn up the vocal group uh, that might end up yeah, somewhere around here. And we have some backing vocals as well. And right now we can see that I'm hitting the left right in kind of sweet spot. It, uh, the, the signal is uh, around minus 18 to minus 12 going up to minus 10 from time to time. So that's kind of a, a, a perfect level and I can use the master fader to turn up or down the volume within the venue. But as you can see now the faders are not in their ideal position in, or, in order to have the best resolution. So let's take a look at uh, the hi-hat. In order to have the, the right hi-hat volume within the venue the fader ends up at say uh, minus 18. So what I would do is to go into the channel, let's turn down the output 18 dBs and then I can raise uh, the fader 18 dBs. Let's do the same with the overhead. This one is say that the perfect volume is at minus 11. I will go in, lower the volume on the output to minus 11 and then I can raise up the fader to zero. I will then go through all of the channels to have the fader sit uh, within a few dBs of the, the zero point. So working like this, you will use the gain to get the optimal signal going into the system uh, and then kind of keep the signal in, in its uh, optimal position uh, and in the way use the, the master fader to, to control the actual volume uh, within the venue. Or uh, in my case, I most often keep the, the master fader at zero and then I will have a matrix to feed the volume to the actual speakers. And up here's a link to the episode where I talk everything about matrices. All right, that's gain staging. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. Take care. <laughs>